Since well, they listen, you were... You're you're the you're you're the fucking professor of fighting, and of course I know you, of professional wrestling. Yeah, I mean we we both. I mean I I, I say you're in text with this fucking guy. I mean just incredible. We're cool guys that love cool wrestling back when it was cool, and ECW was like the cool shit. It was the kind of shit. It was the kind of shit when it when it came through when it came through St. Louis to Kansas City, and I would go to the Ticketmaster. I would go to the Ticketmaster outlet, and and I was like. Hey, yo, I need to get some uh, ECW tickets, you know, this many, whatever. And and then the, the guys behind the fucking, you know, the guys that are selling the shit will be like, oh, shit, yeah, man, I saw that shit like midnight, man. That shit, that's the real shit. People believed it. Like, like people that weren't like, you know, like the Marks or the fucking real hardcore wrestling fans or whatever, they believed that fucking ECW was actually real shit. It, it's, it's kind of like the guys in jail, not, you know, not that I've been in jail a bunch, but... The guys in jail who thought Goldberg, everything else in wrestling was fake, but Goldberg was real. He was the one guy who couldn't uh, actually get beat. You know what I mean? ECW was the Goldberg it, of wrestling. There was a credibility for it, and it was cool, too, because nobody was doing it. We had real music. We didn't have no stupid entrance songs. We were playing real music, pretty hip, hip, cutting-edge music underground music where there's you know you know heavy metal or hip hop or punk or whatever you know we're just you know videos you know the packages we used to do it was real it was real uh, gritty and it was just it was underground it had the it had this vibe and um you know it was just it, it made it cool you know and um you know that's that's what helped that's what helped make us we just had a vision and it was just something completely different and we did. We went out there and we worked as hard, as hard as anybody in the business. We worked harder than anybody in the business, and uh, you know we 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 took it to each other. I mean, we that 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 was how we drew money. And fans had a thirst for it. Fans were dying for it. And if something like that came along, I see. I don't I don't believe in rehashing it and copying it. But if you could take it to another level, whatever that next level may be, I'm not saying you have to get more violent, but just create something a hybrid something, you know, different that has never been done before, you know, that's what that's what's that's what's missing out there. I thought Ring of Honor was gonna do it, but they dropped the ball several times because, you know, they just go out there for twenty five minutes, kick out of every move and no sell everything. And nobody wants to see that too after a while. It gets old. You see one Ring of Honor match, you've seen it all. And uh, you know, I'm not dissing them because they do some tremendous work, but you know, it's overkill as well. You have to find a good medium balance, you know, and, and that was the 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 benefit of having a guy like Paul Heyman, who really was the mastermind behind it all, and uh, unfortunately, there's nobody out there right now in wrestling that can't that, that has that vision anymore. You know, because Vince hey. McMahon, when he broke wrestling, in, you know, in, in in the mid '80s when he blew it up, he was, he was a visionary. We may not have liked it, but millions of others did. You know, and it blew up huge, and uh, we all have him to thank for it. And uh, you know, and and after that. Things died down, and ECW, was, you know, and Monday Night Night Raw and Nitro blew it up as well, you know, and WCW was on to something for the first year when Hall and Nash came in, you know, until they dropped the ball. So that's what we, you know, we need something like that to happen, and I just, uh, unfortunately, you know, I, I really have a, unless somebody does something drastic, you know what it is, and, you know, Vince still is, is, is making a lot of money, and I think he's in a comfort zone. Until he starts losing money and losing stockholders, that's when the problem will come, you know, and something right, happens. Yeah, yeah. Because right now we everybody's had, just smooth sailing. We've had a bunch of a bunch of guys on. We had Klein Rock, who I know you worked with Klein Rock with the uh, Wrestling Society X, and he was trying to do something. You know, he was trying to do something cool, but it came off to me. It came off real hokey, and obviously, it must have came off real hokey to everybody else. Too because it didn't it get did, the ratings did. and shit, but but I mean he's got a lot of other ideas. I mean you know he's got a lot of really cool fucking ideas. He does the Viva La Lucha uh, series yeah, and, yeah, and he's doing I, this new Viva yeah. Viva Viva or Las, uh, Viva Las Vegas or no Lucha Las Vegas thing and shit like that. He's got like cool ideas, but somehow they just don't come across cool to like. Because you got to be cool to the type of people that will actually watch wrestling. Because there's cool, like there's a punk rock cool where there's just a bunch of poser dipshits that are trying to be cool, and then there's like cool to the people that will actually go pay a fucking ticket for wrestling. I mean, CZW is about as close to that crowd as you could get, but CZW just some somehow never just comes across cool enough. 
I don't know what it is. Right. Maybe you know. I don't know. But uh, I, I, I've but never seen Lucha it. League, but uh, I mean, you've heard of it, and you see, and the, the, those no, crowds yeah. are, are similar. You know, they're, they're similar to the, the old ECW crowd where they they really are crazy. They really, you know, if you fuck up, they shit on you. You know that kind of whole thing. But uh, right. But do, do you see that? I mean, without Paul Heyman, is there any chance besides besides me and, and Violence Jack maybe coming across some money and, and really funding something and making it cool and underground? Is the only thing that's going to be cool and sort of underground that people will go to? Do you think it's only going to be the Lucha Libre thing? Because that you get Viva La Lucha and uh, Lucha uh, uh, Lucha Libre uh, Revolution or whatever the fuck that is up in Detroit, and those guys pack out buildings of stuff. Do you think that's the yeah. next cool thing in wrestling, maybe? Uh, I think that that might have a shot. I mean, I know it, it's definitely got a huge audience, um, especially out out west, you know. Um, I, I think, you know, Kleinrock, to get back with Kleinrock, I like Kevin a lot. I speak to him on a regular basis. We were working on a project uh, recently that unfortunately didn't work. But, uh, yeah, he does have a lot of good ideas, but that's the thing. There, You know, some things are... You know, you just have to have. He has the the, the ideas, but he, I think it's hard for him to translate that idea into wrestling because he's not a wrestling guy. He's a TV guy. You know, you you need that wrestling mind to help work. You know what I mean? And you need that other element. We are, you know, I was trying to do something. I'm good friends with Billy Corgan, and me and Billy were trying to do something. You know, up up until six months ago, you know, we always talk about putting something out in wrestling. You know, Billy Corgan from Smashing Pumpkins, and um, right. you know, it just it, it it's it's got to be. You know, the, 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 it sounds corny, but the stars got to align, right place, right time, right idea, right people. You know, and uh, you never know. You catch lightning in a bottle. It just doesn't happen all the time. And you know, the uh, lucha lucha could work. You know, I definitely think it could work. But uh, I think also too, though, for it to I, I just think you know it, it still is very sectional to to the U.S. wrestling fan because the U.S. wrestling fans are very fickle, you know, and and you know, they don't they don't know what they want. And unfortunately, with all the stuff that they have seen, they're 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 spoiled. We spoiled wrestling fans back then. You know, they were lucky to they they would sit and wait up and watch squash matches. Now, if you get Randy Orton against John Cena, you shit on it on Raw. It's like you see main events that used to be on pay-per-views every week, you know, and it's like, why am I buying a pay-per-view when I could watch it on Raw? Well, because they go 20 minutes instead of five? Big deal. Still getting the same I, shit, listen, you know? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I believe in squash matches. I, I talk about this every week on the show. I think, squash, I think TNA should do nothing but squash matches because half the time they squash the guys they're trying to push in three minutes on their fucking show. Hey, Justin, would you take some calls? I almost never fucking take calls because it almost turns into a disaster piece. But I got, I mean, dude, you got this shit lit up, man. Would you take some calls yeah, from the humanoid? Some, let's take some calls. Yeah, oh, my God. All right, right, I'm going to... I'll, I'll try. I'll try. I'll try it. A few, a few calls. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try it. You gotta understand, Justin. I hate the callers. I hate the people more than you, uh, more than you can imagine. Seven one four. I know you're on there. You've been on there. You want to talk to Justin Credible, Betty? Three two one seven one four. Area code. Do you know your area code? Yes, you don't. Let's fuck him. Nine five four. Wherever this is. Nine five four. Do you want to talk to Justin Curtis? This is why I hate it. I, mean, I hate everything. Skype Just call. Quit. Skype call. What do you want to do? Just quit, brother. I ain't got to say nothing. I man. hate it so much. You know what? I know there's one guy that's going to talk. I know there's one motherfucker. Amos the Strangler. My man, I know uh -oh. you want to talk to Justin Curtis. Uh -huh. Now you do it. I would have called in sooner, but uh, I, I had a little hold up at the weed spot, if you know what I mean. I was going to take you guys with me, but <laughs> I figured that wouldn't be. I, I walked in the house, and there was a bunch of fucking gangbangers in the house, and I was like, you know what? I'm probably not going to put these guys on the air. <laughs> but, yeah, but, but yeah, just uh, I, I don't, I don't want to dick ride or nothing, but uh, just incredible. You're a fucking cool motherfucker, man. Hell, yeah. You're a mark, brother. That's a mark right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm a mark. <laughs> He's a mark. He's yeah, a I'm a mark. Yeah. I'm a mark. Anyways, anyways, I wanted to ask him something. Were you were you part of that group? Uh, I think it was Energy Rules in LA, and you guys beat the shit out of the SPW guys. Were you part of that group? Yeah. That the SPW guys? 
Okay. I was in the, I was in the ring when that happened. He was in the yeah. ring with Tommy Dreamer. Yeah. Oh, okay. But um, what what I want to know is, was it weird when when you, when you went back into like going into the XCW locker room after all that shit had happened? But you didn't really fight. You didn't really get into any struggles with anybody, did you? Nah, man. It, to, dude, to me, it's business, and Rob Black was paying me good. So, you know what? Uh, they never did anything to me. I had nothing but respect for those guys. They were trying to make their mark in the business, and uh, I enjoyed working for Rob. You know, I just unfortunately caught it at the end, you know? So, no, there was no animosity, man. It was all good. Did you catch, did you catch any Rob Black with some Messiah runoff? I'm talking about God out here when you're in L.A.? Uh, what happened? I mean, I mean... Uh, the way I look at it, I mean, Rob Black's got to have fucking porn stars all around him all the time. I mean, shit, you didn't catch any of that runoff? Are you married or something or what? Yeah, I'm married. <laughs> Come on, oh, okay, okay, but, that? That's, that's that? the question. I can't tell if I'm talking to Mr. Uh, M- 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 California or fucking uh, Justin. If, hello? <laughs> it's different, <laughs> brother. Yeah, this is why, no, this the- is why fucking sister doesn't take calls. <laughs> hey, well, I, I, no, I have Justin, a question for Justin. Justin. I, I have wait, a question wait, for Justin. Mr. No, wait, wait, Mr. California, wait a minute. Let me ask Justin. I got to follow up with what Amos said because that's a great question. Back, back in those days, back in the ECW days, were you married back then, or were you able to take uh, care, you know, take care of some business? Did, they, did ECW have a lot of? I mean, it had to have had a lot of chicks that were like. Real, I mean, because it was a cool, it was a cool thing. Any, anything cool yeah. and on TV, there's a lot of chicks that are way into it. Last night, oh, yeah, there were there were definitely a lot of chicks. But uh, my wife worked with the company, so she was she was she oh. took care of merchandise. <laughs> so, oh. nah, man, I've been married. I've been married for 13 years happily, so I won't even go there. Oh man, there you go. Oh. <laughs> All right, Mr. Listen, California. guys. Listen, I got got... I got to get up real early tomorrow, so I'm going to wrap this up. I got to get moving. But uh, it was a real pleasure to talk to you guys, man. I really appreciate you giving me some time on the air, man. I had a great time. All man. right, you got anything coming up that you want to promote? That, uh, you know, you got the 2011 coming up. I mean, before you go, do you got a website or a way people can get a hold of you? Uh, just uh, check me out on Facebook. Uh, I'm under my real name, Peter Polacco, P-O-L-A-C-O, and um, I'm hopefully coming out to the West Coast January 21st. You know, just uh, check out, you know, check out my Facebook for more information. But uh, yeah, man, I'm definitely uh, looking to come out west. Oh, January 21st. January 21st. January 21st. I think that's my show, brother. I think that's my show. Yeah, right there. What he just said. Oh, yeah, what he's yes, saying. Sir, I'm looking forward to it, man. It's been a long time Big since I've been out here, so. You know, it's going to be, it's gonna be awesome. Style, huh, brother? Oh, yeah. <laughs> bring well, the, awesome. bring hey, the Singapore hey. king, brother. Yeah. Uh-oh. I hey, definitely will. On the plane, it might be hard. You might have to get one for me. <laughs> I ain't no problem, brother. I ain't no problem. We got a bunch of them out here, man. <laughs> All right, guys. All I right, appreciate hey, it, man. Thanks you guys have a good night. Stuff. Awesome, man. Right. Thanks a lot. Fucking holy shit. That, dude. Hey, yo, uh, Amos, there you are. Look what you did. No, nah, dude, I mean, just, I mean, just incredible get off the phone. That's fucked up. I was going to whip out the Ed Perry and fucking line line, uh, over the phone lie detector test. <laughs> have, have you ever called, have you ever called me Jackie, nigga? <laughs> have you ever looked at, have you ever looked at the same man's kid over and show him? <laughs> oh, he's being deceptive, being deceptive. <laughs> you, you totally fucked everything up. Yeah, it would have been better. I should have said, I should have said Ed Torian's on the line with his, his lie detector, the hu- the human lie detector, Ed Torian. He wants to know if you ever called New Jack a nigga. <laughs> have you ever looked at Have you ever looked at any member of the ECW locker room genitals in the shower? 